I had a video going and it, all of a sudden it just cut off. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it does that now and then. I try to be good about deleting things from my phone, stuff from Gmail and, and uh, uh, stuff from settings and from all the apps. I try to be, yeah, anything that things that I've deleted that need to be sent to the trash can. Mm, just whatever. Whew. I'm tired out just from wiping my feet off. I wanted to bathe tonight, but my sheets are dirty and I don't want to sit up all night and wash them. I need to get us another couple of uh, mattress protectors. You know, those quilted mattress protectors that goes under your fitted sheet. I need another one of them. I actually need to get a couple of them. And here we go. Maybe a whole month from now, when I get another check, Maybe then I can uh, buy a couple of uh, mattress protectors from Amazon or I don't know, Walmart, I don't know which would be better, Amazon or Walmart. Depends on the price, too. Sometimes uh, uh, Amazon's high. Just depends on what it is. Anyway. Um, I, I need to take this pill. It's my... It's my what you call it pill? Cholesterol pill. Boy, these things are hard to get open. My husband bought me this so I can keep up with my pills. And plus, every time I look at it, I'll see what day of the week is. That will help me keep up with what the days of the week are. Should have never not when <laughs> It's 99% of the time I have no idea what day of the week it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the date is. <laughs> and this little girl dog over here, see, she's trying to be as patient as she can with me. Stand it, baby. You can see her there. She's just a baby. Because that's a baby. Ain't that right, it a girl? Oh, that right in a girl. <laughs> I, uh, I feel bad about not taking her for walks, but I can't walk very far at all. I can't walk very far at all and I have to turn around and come back. Uh, I don't know, maybe that keto stuff I ordered will help. They, they ripped me off, they cheated me. They cheated me in order to, tricked me. That's what they did, they tricked me in order to get more money out of it. Their advertisement said thirty dollars. It's okay, I put in my order. And then I get a Gmail from them and, they, and it says that they took out of my disability. They took out directly from my my disability. That's how I paid for it. Well they took out two hundred and thirty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. 
from an order that's supposed to be $30 that they said was going to be $30. I am upset. This happened a couple of days ago. I'm still upset. It took me till tonight before I had the courage to tell Paul about it because I don't, you know, I don't want to stress him out. But I don't hide these things from him. I don't hide how much money I have from him. Now, he don't tell me how much he has. And I don't ask him, but you know what? He takes good care of me. He's good to me. And he loves me. He's there for me. He's the one that goes out every day and goes to work to make that money. So I don't see any problem. That's how I look at it. <laughs> That's how we do when we get along. You know, we, we give and take, we give and take, we meet in the middle sometimes, you know. That's how you do when you're married. Look at that little girl. Look, oh, chat, baby girl. Baby girl. That girl, look at her bottom teeth sticking out. Looks so cute. Looks doggone cute, little girl. Yes, you do. She looks doggone cute. I wonder if she ever understands when I'm saying stuff like that. See there. See that baby girl. <laughs> Ain't enough light on her. <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> well, I'm trying to. <laughs> There's the back of her head. There it is. Here <laughs> girl. Get a girl. <laughs> get a girl, get a girl. You're just a baby. <laughs> She's mama's baby. That's what she is. <laughs> mama's baby. I love her. You see, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm so thankful to God. I don't take it lightly, being blessed. Uh, some of y'all knows what I'm talking about. I don't never take my blessings lightly. Get on the bed. Or, let me try to scoot this a little bit. It better not turn off the video. Okay, I had to scoot that table. <laughs> move, move, little girl. Move, little girl. Well, move, honey. I'm trying to get under the this sheet here, Del. Let me get under. No, oh, she's weird. When she gets in the way, she will not get out of the way. You have to move her. She'll stand there or, or lay there and just look at you, pretending that she don't know what you want her to do. And she's only been told to move and get out of the way a gazillion times. <laughs> She knows, don't you, girl? Don't you, girl? She you knows she's part chihuahua, so I guess she has a right to have a little, a little streak of uh, stubbornness in her. <laughs> this called chihuahua is gonna be so stubborn. But the one, the one that we had, the first one, the very first one we had, 
he was sweet. Oh, he's sweet. He could be we just loved him. And he was stubborn. Ooh, he was stubborn. He'd sit there and he'd stare at you and he wouldn't move. He wouldn't do what you wanted him to do. He, he'd just get kind of rigid. His whole body was like a statue and he'd stare at you. Yeah, he knew. He knew. <laughs> bothering me. My right foot, I don't know why, it gets, it sometimes it feels like my, my, all my toes and my, and my foot's going a little bit numb. It feels weird and it bothers me. I wonder what that could mean. If any of y'all knows what that could mean, let me know, will you please? It's weird, I've never had this happen to me before, except for the last couple of days. Started doing this. It's weird. It's mostly in my toes and, the, uh, and across my foot where the toes join into the foot. From the toes on up into that where they bend, it feels kind of numb a little bit. Oh. Oh. I sure feel that arthritis in my big toe. It's awful. Oh. And most of the time she wants to lay down uh, either right smack dab in the middle of the bed and crowd me, or she wants to lay in one, down at the foot in one of the corners. But it's usually where she'll lay down at the foot at one of the corners, but sometimes she'll lay kind of in the middle of the bed and crowd me. This is a full-size bed, but I need plenty of room. Because, you know, when you're arthritic, you can't just flip-flop like a fish. When you, like when you're young, you have to roll like this. And you need plenty of room to do that rolling. So, you, if, you, it don't matter if you're sleeping by yourself. You need a full-size bed. Yeah. If you're a married couple, you at least need a queen to a king. It's hard to go uh, smaller than a queen, because you then you wouldn't really wouldn't have much room. Get like with this double bed. Now me and me and my honey, we can sleep together on a double bed. We sure can. We've done it before. But you know how it is on a double bed. You either one of you's got much room at all. You've got this little, little bit of room, space about like this, and that includes sleeping on your back or sides, your stomach. Anytime you need to roll over something, you've got to switch, scooch, and flip flop. Cause you gotta do it while you're laying in one place, you know. <laughs> you have to, you have to turn yourself like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> Chicken. Uh, I 
I miss sleeping with my honey buddy sometimes. I, you know, I wish he was, we at least had our beds in the same bedroom. I would like that. I really would. If anybody ever comes here and they like a family member and they need to use a, they need a bedroom, Paul can move his bed in here because this room is twice as big as his bedroom. So we could put, take that kitchen table right there and uh, take it apart and, you know, put it in the corner somewhere. That way he can have room for his bed. I, now, I wouldn't have my sewing table, craft table, handy to use, but that's, that's all right because if we ever needed to do that, we could. And we have a twin-size mattress bed set that Paul slept on for a long time before he got his double bed. We've got that standing up against the wall in there, the far corner of the laundry room. And uh, so we, if we need to, we can set that bed up. If somebody needs to come stay with us. Yeah. Or if we had to, me and Paul would sleep in this double bed together, you know, if we had like uh, three or four family members or somebody come, that had to come live with us, then we'd, me and Paul would be sleeping in this bed together, set one of these beds together, and uh, I don't know. We'd get it figured out, though. But we would have, uh, we would have, we would have, one. we would have a double bed and a twin size bed that uh, somebody could sleep on. Up to three people, I guess. You just, we just, that's just, you know, just thinking about what you know. What if such and such happened? How would we deal with it? You know, that's like, that's almost like uh, playing a, a creative game in your mind and it makes you have to think. You know, like reading a puzzle or something. You know what I mean? It makes you think. You have to use your, your head, you have to think, well, what if they did this? What would that have caused to happen next? And this and that and this and that. So, that's how it is if you're going to write a story or a book. But don't ask me, because I don't know. I'm just rambling. <laughs> I finished that asking today. All right, tomorrow I'll do a quick, a short video of it so you can see it. <laughs> I just, I, I just whistled through my gums without trying to. <laughs> that's, that's how it is when you're talking with no teeth, you know, it's the way your gums come together. And as you're, you're pronouncing a syllable and your, your, uh, air is blowing outwards as you're saying something or other, whatever, 
your air is blowing out, it makes a whistling sound sometimes. It sounds like Phyllis Dillers. She could do it real good, Phyllis Dillers. She could make a hat that whistling sound anytime, man. I can't whistle the same way she did. It has to happen accidentally. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of uh, embarrassing, like if I'm talking to somebody on the phone and it happens that loud. <laughs> see somebody in town you're talking to them and it goes <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh uh, I love old people jokes because it's funny it's so crazy it's funny <laughs> I like funny goaties. <laughs> I love goats. They have a a uh, I, I wouldn't call it mischievous. They, they can be mischievous, yes. But they have a little bit of a <laughs> wild and goofy goofiness in their it's uh, DNA into their character, you know. That's why they all like that goofy and silly and funny and sometimes they're mean <laughs> when they when they want a bunch of <laughs> Uh, one time, I, many years ago, I was in the backyard mowing grass at my dad's house, and I felt something. I was, you know, push mowing along, and then I felt something bump, kind of like that, on my butt. I turned around, and it was Billy Goat. I went, "Oh shit!" And he put his head down again. It was coming at me. Again. He had me running around. And around the, the lawnmower, and the lawnmower was just sitting there running. And my dad, it wasn't long, my dad just happened to come out up to the back door and he saw what was going on. And he staggered out there with a, some kind of a stick or something and, and made that goat go away. <laughs> oh gosh, I remember that. Oh. Oh, my daddy, my daddy. My brother Jeff looks a lot like my daddy. He, he does, he has a strong joiner look, my brother Jeff. It, but there's something about his eyes. I think he has my our grandmother's eyes. I really think he does. Cause I have a picture of her right over there, and looking at her eyes is like judge eyes. I've never seen anybody else before in my life that had eyes like that. Just my granny and my brother Judd. Ain't that weird? Yeah, ain't that interesting? Weird. And I'll tell you something else is weird. Is all my life, since I was little, I've had trouble with my feet. But mainly, mainly my right foot hurting me. And, and, um, I'm very, very flat-footed, born that way, and my right foot is a half size bigger than my left foot, so I have hell getting shoes that fit right. 
I, most time I don't get shoes that fit right. They just have to put up with something too big or too small. Or sometimes I wear men's shoes because men's shoes fit just right. But, uh, yeah. Ain't it weird? try to make some um, throat pillows to sell and make them real pretty. I can maybe put a quilt design on one side something on the other side and I'll just make it uh, a little bit fancy fancy you sew like this about one inch inside inside the seam of the pillowcase like that so you will have a Thing like that all the way around your pillowcase, your stuffed pillowcase. And it'll look, it'll look kind of, kind of high dollar a little bit. And especially what color, depending on what color you use on it, and what color thread and what kind of embellishment you might do to it to make it look elegant. <laughs> elegant or, uh, modern modern grandiose <laughs> that's a good way of putting some styles modern grandiose Crushed. That dang psoriasis crushed. Oh, sorry, little girl. Oh, it drives me nuts. It's scary thinking about tornadoes. That is really a terrible, terrible thing. Horrific. Terrifying, horrific. Oh. I never, well, I've been up close to dust devils out here in West Texas. Uh, but, but as far as an actual twister that can do some damage, and kill somebody. I haven't been close to one, thank God. Oh, thanks be to God. Get a guard, get a guard. <laughs> that, that first chihuahua we had he always wanted to sleep on my pillow or next to my head or or uh, a lot of times he'd just go under the covers and go down to my feet. He always wanted to sleep under the covers or down by my feet, mainly in the, in the wintertime, but like in the summertime, you know, he'd get up here around my head and stuff. <laughs> Oh, so 
wait, wait, you all heard me. Oh, when the eyes of some an innocent creature like that, whether it's a dog or a possum or a cat or whatever, they're looking up at you with them innocent eyes. And what you see in that in those eyes is almost like telepathy. They're saying, I love you. I hope you will always love me too. Because when a dog loves you, it's forever. They're precious. See, we, we as human beings, we're supposed to be like that. So that tells me that dogs are better than we are. <laughs> I think they are. I think dogs are better than we are. <laughs> I'm gonna take these off for a minute. adventure dreams lately and they're, they're just full of activity you know, there's always something going on or I'm doing something or trying to get somewhere or whatever it, there's always something going on and it's very detailed and realistic Massage. Oh. Oh. My old toes need to be massaged. Oh, I need a foot massage. I have a massager. It's like a a, a rectangular shaped thing if you sit in a chair and you put it behind your back and you do this button and it massages your back I haven't even tried it yet I, I, I won it at the company Christmas party two years ago two years ago <laughs> over, a little over two years ago, and I haven't used it yet. I need to tell my husband we've got to get batteries for it and do whatever we need to do for it so we can use it and try it out. She shall. That's what it's for. Sometimes I think I'm nuts. I'll have things that I need and I'll do without them because I want them to last. And if I use them, they'll get worn out. But see, I need them now already. So why don't I use them? Because I don't know when I'll be able to get a, a new pair. It's all going to take to last because what if some disaster happens and we're suddenly thrust into abject poverty? Then what? Well, see, Dad made us be poor. Let's see. He made us be poor. After uh, he divorced my little brother's mama, and we moved back to, we moved to Leander. From then on, we was dirt poor. Of course, Dad wasn't making a real high salary either. He was working as a carpenter. And he started out from scratch as carpenters 
helper or apprentice, however you want to put it. So, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't rich, and he, he bought us a brand new trailer house to live in when we moved out there to High Chaparral. They're two miles from the school. Two miles from the school. I wonder if he looked for a place that close to the school on purpose. He might have. He might have. I wouldn't be surprised. Because my dad had to walk to school. The whole time he was growing up, he walked to school. And uh, he, he, he treated us the way he was treated when he was a kid. <laughs> he had to walk to school. Because <laughs> that little town is so small. All the kids in town could walk to school. Wasn't that big a deal? They didn't need a bus service. <laughs> so, yeah, my daddy had to walk to school every day. Every day, every day, every grade he went to, he had to walk to school. So that's what we did. We walked to school. Once we was living somewhere where it was close enough to walk, he made sure we walked. Because uh, he had to walk, see? So we had to, because he had to. And every day the school bus drive past us, drive past us as we was walking to school. And then in the afternoons, we'd be walking, start out walking home up the hill to the house. School bus go right past us. Thank God we never got run over. It was just a one lane country, kind of a, a paved country road, kind of. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, like on the street going through town, you know, where they're, they're made a lot better. But you know, some old side street where they just they just uh, roll out a real thin layer of asphalt and call it done, you know, like that. <laughs> but that's what we did. We walked downhill hill to school two miles, back up hill in the afternoon two miles. Sometimes we'd be so hungry, we'd be just starving to death. Damn. Starving, I'm telling you, starving. I don't think we usually had anything for breakfast before we went to school. I don't think we did. We just got up, and got dressed, and went. Took our school supplies and whatever we, we needed. Just went. The Mustang grapes in Central Texas grow like crazy. It's fascinating to see where they, they've grown wild for a long time. And uh, they'll just grow, they'll grow up a big, huge tree and cover it. I've seen trees like that 
big oak trees and everything. If that grapevine's allowed to continue, it'll continue to grow up and cover over that tree. Continue. <laughs> That's the word for the day. Continue. Jesus pretty soon. Tell you I finished that crochet thing, kaleidoscope after. Finished it. Glad to be done with it. I don't I don't really like it. I don't like those colors. My husband took a picture of it and sent it to his friend's messenger. And his friend might buy it from me. And uh And I said, well, make me an offer. He offered me something like, I think it was 30. And I'm like, no, no. I'd have to have at least $60 just to pay for the yarn. And I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be making no profit. At least I'd get my 60 bucks back, approximately, whatever. So I hope he does buy it. I'll have to ask my husband. He might be, be wanting to buy it for his, uh, his living, his girlfriend, common-law wife, okay? I'm old-fashioned. I've got to make things understood. I'm honest and understood, you know, just saying facts, because that's what it is, it's, you know, they, they go and get married and they're just, uh, just living together. You know, when I, when I met Paul, we did live together for a while. We did live together for a while. Let me think. July, August, September, October, November, December. Six months. Okay. We lived together six months, I think it was, just about six months before we got married. But I wanted to marry him a long time before that. And uh, uh, it, it, I'm glad he agreed with me, thank God, because I couldn't have just settled for us just always just living together, even though we loved each other. But still, we was just living together, and that's not being married. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, he was, uh, he was, he, Turns out he had a good reason why he was waiting. He was waiting. 
and I'm not going to talk about that because he might not want it talked about. But he wanted to wait, and he's waiting for my sake. No, he is. It's something. Anyway, we lived together about six months before we got married. But, uh, as soon as uh, a certain thing happened, then we got married. Your eyes just keeps coming back in the same places over and over and over and over. I can rake them out a zillion times and it just comes back. I need to soak in a tub, a deep tub in Epsom salts water. times a week to, you know, to do something to the skin that might help loosen the dead skin better. Might help just a little bit. Uh, it wouldn't help a lot, but it might help a little bit. A little bit's better than nothing. It's inside my nose. <laughs> it's behind my ears. Oh God. Right now it's itching me on top of my foot. It's horrible. Well, I'm gonna say good night, y'all. This this uh video is getting long, so I'll say and to all a Merry Christmas and to all a good night.